Hi, everyone, and welcome to our latest episode of the Celebrity Soft Pants Stitch In. I'm Pam from the Stitch TV Show. I am excited to be joined by my friend and co host, Lynn. Hello, everyone. And joining us, very fabulous, Scissor Man, Brent Fenitza. Hey. Hi, guys. <laughs> hey, Brent. We're so excited that you're here. Will you please? Take a few minutes and tell everyone uh, who the Scissor Man is, what you do, what you deal. Ah, that's a secret. <laughs> you but I guess one. not any longer, right? That uh, Well, my name is Brent uh, Fenitza, also known as the Scissor Man, and I'm the president, founder, and director of Specialty Product Sales Incorporated, uh, which is our corporate name, and uh, started Fomori Cutlery about 20 years ago. Uh, then there they go. Scissor. <laughs> that, uh, and basically the whole reason I started this uh, was, was from a few angels right now. Uh, one of them was Clotilda. I don't know if you remember who Clotilda uh, was, uh, but there really is not an educator uh, that I know that hasn't learned something from Clotilde, and there's really not an educator out there um, that isn't teaching something that she, you know, came up with or taught herself. And the other one is the infamous Margaret Islander. Um, those were my two angels in the very beginning and just really wanting to create a quality, a, a great quality product at a very affordable price. Okay, so Fomore is the brand that people would know you by. Fomore. Awesome. You know, amore in, Ita in Italian means love. My last name being Fenizza, so um, you know, my name with a little bit of love added to it. <laughs> Very good. So, what new things are you doing this year with Fomore scissors? Ooh, what new things are we doing with them? Um, you know, we're always evolving. Um, is there a perfect scissor? I can find even the most expensive, highest quality brand you could imagine. I can sit there and pick flaws out in them. Um, so we, we're constantly improving on our quality and our manufacturing process. The one thing that I'm really focused on right now, uh, other than our left-handed series that we just uh, came out with a few new, uh, a few cues for them, but uh, is thinning the blades, um, a, a real thin blade uh, with extremely hard steel. Uh, and that's, that's my next big venture right now is I'm wanting to create the thinnest, most sturdiest blade possible. Okay, why does it need to be thinner? Like I have an idea, but why do you think it needs to be thinner? So why does it need to be thin? All right, take an applique scissor. Yeah. Right. All right. So right now, other brands of, of duckbill scissors, uh, of, of the duckbill applique scissors, the duckbills on them are more than two inches wide. Right. So when I created our first uh, true duck, uh, applique duckbill scissor, the duckbill part on it was exactly an inch, an inch. Then everybody was like, man, this is great. It should be smaller though to get into those tinier places. So we came out with the duckling, uh, the four and a half inch uh, duckbill applique scissor and the duckbill on that was only a half inch wide. But when I started sitting with the educators and listening to the techniques that they're teaching, you wanna get as close to that edge as, you know, to that seam line uh, that you're working on and a thinner blade will slip under that fabric and get even closer to the uh, to the seam line without cutting into the seam line. Uh, so if your blade is thicker, think about your seam and how thick your seam is. Your your seam is very thin, and that that blade on a on a traditional applique scissor is is a bit thick. And so what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting, especially for the appliqueers, uh, to rock their applique even better uh, with, with more precision. And part of that is going to be smaller duckbills and thinner blades. Uh, 
but just uh, not on applique scissors. I want to do it on, on all embroidery scissors, uh, trimming scissors. Um, I'm finding that the thinner the blade, the less steep the angle of the cutting edge uh, you have to put on the on the blade for it to cut. And if, if you really think about it, the steeper the, the edge is on the cutting blade, the thinner that edge, that cutting edge is, the more opportunity you have to nick it. So what I'm wanting to do is create a thinner blade so we don't have to put such a steep angle on the scissor so they'll stay sharp longer. Gotcha. Okay. Shh, don't tell anybody though. Oh, <laughs> secret guys. <This> our secret. <laughs> so in addition to thinner blades, you guys are working What on else are we doing? Oh. Ah. Boy, um, developing a rotary cutter, uh, that is just about done. And we have two different blades we've got that we're testing out right now. And um, I'm testing out Japanese steel and then I'm also testing out German steel. And believe it or not, the, the German steel is a much harder blade than the Japanese steel blade is. So that's what we're doing right now is uh, we've got blade number two and blade number one. And so we've got these out uh, to a few people that are testing them for us to give us their feedback on it. Um, but, and we've got a really cool idea that we're gonna be doing with the rotary blades. Uh, but that'll be in the next episode because it's still a very top secret. Uh, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so rotary cutters um, and new packaging. Uh, we're working on new packaging for the Fomori products. Uh, instead of the vinyl pouch that we're working on, my team has, de yeah, that's that's going to be the old style. Uh, you didn't bring a copy of the new style. So... <laughs> We don't have the new one, but the new the new packaging is going to be beautiful. And the great thing about it, it's not going to increase the cost of our uh, of our current packaging. So you know we're not going to have to increase the price of the product for the package, which kind of frustrates me a lot of times when I'm looking at an item and I know that the packaging costs more than the item. It's just like there's a problem with this, you know. But um, I do like the fact that you can keep the package uh, as a little protector for your scissor. So that's why I've really stayed with the vinyl pouch. But this other packaging that we've created, you can even do that as well. So we're excited about that. Looking forward to um, seeing it. What will else it be is at it? Houston? The prototypes will. We're going um, we're, we're to be talking to some of our uh, dealers that sell our products and get some of their input into it. But uh, yeah, so swing by and we'll show you a sneak peek. Ooh. That uh, cosplay, uh, we're really venturing into the cosplay movement right now. Uh, so we're in the process of developing a few tools for the cosplay industry and really getting to um, understand their wants and needs, which there's such a plethora and it's so much fun. No, no pun intended, but it is really a lot of fun. Uh, and Twitch, are you familiar with Twitch? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I had no idea what Twitch was, I'll be honest with you, until here recently. Going to the cosplay, uh, we've got a couple of quilters that use Twitch. And um, so we have a new Twitch channel uh, called uh, Fomori Creative. And we're going to really launch that next year. And, you know, what we're really wanting to do is, is get educators, uh, uh, people that know how to operate a sewing machine, really sit there and teach people how to do these techniques, how to thread a bobbin, you know, going from A to Z because uh, the cosplayers uh, aren't really having a great success with the independent re retail chains. And as you well know, going into Walmart and asking, uh, you know, some education on how to use your sewing machine isn't really useful. So what we're really wanting to do is we're, wa we're wanting to bridge that gap with the independent retailers uh, and the cosplayers and uh, make the most out of it. So that's pretty much what we've got on our plate right now. Uh, we wanna incorporate a couple of more left-handed scissors, our rotary cutter, the new packing, cosplay twitch. And it's never a dull moment around our office. <laughs> awesome. So, Lynn. Oh, right. So we always ask weird, funky questions. So this is one of our weird, funky questions. So. Oh, boy, you scared. can only eat three foods for the rest of your life, and they're going to give you all the nutritional value that you will ever need. What three foods 
would you have? Three foods. Um, well, the, at the very top of the list, you guys, would have to be a Pakistani mango. There you go. I would have to have Pakistani mangoes. They are absolutely, a, if, once you've had one, you can eat another mango. Um, number the second food, uh, being Italian, I'd have to have my pasta. I'd, I'd have to have pasta, right? Yeah. Um, and, and third would be uh, some chicken tikka masala. Ooh, very cultural. Yeah. Well, like you know, it's a, culture, you're bringing it all in. Well, that's a, uh, the advantage of what I've done for the past 20 years is getting to travel and, and eat and see a lot of neat culture and, and eat and eat a lot of good food. Very cool. So, Brent, if we're going full Gilligan's Island and you're trapped on this island with your three foods and your yacht got you there, what would your name of your yacht be? Huh. Grand Theft Yacht. Because <laughs> that's the only way this guy would be able to afford one. <laughs> so, yeah, it wouldn't be a Grand Theft Auto, it would be a Grand Theft Yacht. There you go. We'd just name it Unstolen. <laughs> yeah. Hot commodity. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's a good one. Okay, Brett, now you know me. So um, this is my question. What is your favorite non-cuss cuss word? Darn it. Darn it. Yes. And if you ever, you know, there, there, there's, there's a couple of things you never want. Your, you, you, you don't want to hear from your scissor man. And one of them is darn it. <laughs> if I'm sharpening your scissor and you hear me say darn it, it's not pretty, but I'll fix it's it. Don't good, worry. It's not a good thing. So very good. Okay. So when you're in your scissor sharpening groove, do you listen to music, audiobooks, TV? Got anything going on like that? You know, Pam, when I'm when I'm sharpening, I don't. I, I don't like to listen to anything. It, I really get into my head when I'm sharpening, uh, and I, I become really creative uh, when I'm sharpening. You know, uh, your hobby is is making, you know, and your talent is quilts and quilt making and sewing, and, and you know, mine is is the steel and, and making it right. And I actually listen to how this steel is going over the, the wheels, and if it's not our brand of scissors, I can really tell the quality of the of the steel uh, by the way it reacts to the wheel. And so I, I really get in tune with the wheel and the and the sound of the grinding. So uh, uh, pretty much a quiet guy when I'm behind the wheel. Yeah, I think you would need to be. Like that sounds like you really have to be in tune with that. I don't know. If it went wrong, it just in my head, it's like brakes going down. <laughs> Darn it! <laughs> yeah. Not good. Not good. Whoopsie. So, any closing thoughts? Any, you know, share your social channels, handles, avatar names? Any of that good Avatar stuff? names? In touch with you. Well, you know, uh, our Facebook is a lot of fun. Uh, it, it's absolutely pure. I, we don't get into anything but this industry. So Famori Cutlery uh, and Facebook, F-A-M-O-R-E. Um, we've got our Twitter. Uh, we've got Instagram, uh, Twitch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that uh, I, I really enjoy listening to what my customers have to say about the products. Um, you know, when I, when I go to the factory, you know, uh, like a week or two before I go, I'll throw up there that I'm heading back. What are your thoughts or ideas? Share me with what you need. You know, there's, there's two types of products. There's products wanted or, and products needed. And the needed products are your staple products. They're the ones that are going to be here today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. The wanted products are the more of the trendier products. And I've gotten some really good ideas from, uh, from listening to people uh, and, and their thoughts and ideas on an existing tool, if it only would have had this or if it only could have done this. Um, so I, I, I really engage in our in our social media. So I encourage you guys to, you know, 
join us on our Facebook. It's a lot of fun. It's a growing family. We have friends on there from all over the world. It's really, really fun. So people can find you in person at Market Festival both? Oh, both. Yes. Well, uh, I mean, that's the only way that I wouldn't do market or festival is if I was six feet under. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll be in Houston. Uh, I do a few staple shows that, that we'll always continue to do as long as God willing. Um, Paducah, uh, the American Quilter Society Spring Paducah Show. Um, and of course, the Houston International Quilt Market. And you know, I'll, I tell everybody, <clears throat> If you're an avid quilter, you have to go to both shows because they're two totally different shows. Uh, e even as big as they are, the, that quilt display in Houston by far is the most beautiful quilt display you will ever see in the world. Um, and that entire convention center is full quilting. But you leave the convention center and the spirit of quilting kind of, you know, goes away. And Paducah, it's a complete community-wide effort. Um, you know, Paducah, Paducah's awesome. So Paducah, Houston, uh, I do the original Sewing and Quilt Expo in Atlanta uh, at the uh, uh, Energy Infinite mm -hmm. Center. I also do the show in Lakeland, Florida, the original Sewing and Quilt Expo. And uh, uh, I also do, um, uh, Hold on. There's Atlanta, there's Lakeland, there's Paducah, there's Houston, uh, Cleveland, uh, the original Sewing Expo in Cleveland, Ohio, and Machine Quilters Exposition. I'm really excited. I haven't, I haven't been to MQX in several years. Um, J.O., I'm so excited about this, and I hope everybody else is too. We're going to have an absolute blast. Um, our newsletter, uh, going back to social media, uh, check out our newsletter. It's called The Cutting Edge, uh, and you can go, you can find it and sign up for it at our website at www.fomoricutlery.com. The, the Cutting Edge newsletter is a really great newsletter because it talks about the entire industry. It's just not about I and me. It's about us and we. And we always try to highlight uh, somebody of a major influence, an educator, uh, uh, you know, different challenges people have had and their stories uh, and also news about the industry. So it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Brent, and letting our viewers know more about you. Uh, again, you can find Brent online for moricutlery.com and all his links. And that's going to be it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thanks everyone. you guys. Have a great night. You too.